Now for Global Business Updates, Rotus Udiri joins us. Good morning, Rotus. Good morning, Dr. Abasi. Good morning, Ayo. Vimbai. Rotus All our Udiri. viewers out there. Uh -huh. Humans. Yes. Seekers of knowledge <laughs> that use artificial intelligence to, to understand the world. Today is a happy day. I finally got my hands on Gemini. Happy birthday. Oh yes, happy birthday to our solid producer Ayo. He celebrated his birthday today. Report. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Finally got I, my I you know implications. Report. Yes, there's implications. Yeah, so I have the implications. Somebody but let's get to it. Let's get to it. Let's get to productivity. So we finally got our hands on Chaji on uh, Gemini um, 3.0. After all the hype and everything, finally used it. And ladies and gentlemen, the 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 the, the hype is real. So let's let, let me start off with how Alphabet has performed, or how it performed in November. It was the best performing stock on the Magnificent Seven. This is a raw Excel sheet. This is like adding uh, your ground tomatoes and onions to the parboiled rice before you start mixing it up to make your jello rice, right? These are just the raw numbers. This is Alphabet in uh, the, at the beginning of November. $284 per share, closing at $320. Alphabet of the, excuse me, yes, Alphabet, the, the parent of Google. Of the Magnificent Seven, the best performing stock, 12.67. There were only three of them that did well. The second was Apple, and then you had Meta at 1.61%. For this particular month, the worst performing stock, guess what, was NVIDIA, right? Uh, as well as Tesla falling, and Amazon and Microsoft. I fed this to uh, chat GPT and asked it to take the Excel file and create a chart showing how those stocks are performed. And it said it couldn't do it. It said it didn't see the file. Sent that same file to, um, uh, uh, to Gemini 3.0 and it was able to visualize the chart. It was doing so. This is this is the gist of everyone comparing Gemini. This is part of the reason why Gemini stock has took off in November, and you had uh, all these other stocks uh, falling in in comparison, right? So this is this is one. Now let's take that's this is we're using numbers here. Let's this it actually explains further why it wasn't able to use logos, but then use colors to represent each of the companies. Beyond that, let's use stories for today. Actually, pre current stories. Russia has just issued its first Remnibi bonds. Now, we took this particular story from the Financial Times and we fed it to um, Gemini 3.0 to summarize the gist of why Russia has issued Remnibi. And before I even explain that, remember when we talked about open AI and advanced micro devices coming together to create a data center, a six gigawatt data center. And we compared it, look at the bottom here. Nigeria's output is, was at, we peaked at 5.8 um, gigawatts. Again, 1,000 megawatts gives you a gigawatt. So 5,800 megawatts is 5.8 gigawatts. So essentially this data center that OpenAI, because we sent this to ChatGPT and said, visualize this. There are spelling errors. We were open about this. For example, um, it's it misspelled substation. These are the substations that are supposed to power a lot of the, that are supposed to power these data centers. There is an I missing here. It also um, misspelled cooling towers. See cooling, C O U L I N G. These are some of the teething problems that some of these chats have had. However, take a look at what we sent. Uh, we might have to float this uh, on the screen so the viewers can see this, right? With this is this is Gemini 3.0 explaining why Russia essentially issued RemDB bonds, and I haven't slept, so maybe my eyes are bad. But I challenge everyone that is looking at the screen right now to find a single, single grammatical error from Gemini 3.0. There is not one. So let's explain what's going on. Russia is at has attacks Ukraine. It is trying to fund its war. The war has become expensive. Russia is importing military equipment. It is paying the dead soldiers whose families need compensation. And as a result of all that spending, what's happened? You are pumping so much money supply into the economy, it has become inflationary. So the Russian ruble has weakened. As a result of inflation climbing, the central bank of, uh, of, of Russia has increased interest rates, which is the reason why you have this, Gemini actually explained it here, that interest rates are high. So it is issuing Remni B because the Chinese currency is not facing as much pressure as the Russian currency. And as a result of that, borrowing costs are lower. It was 20 billion Remni B that they issued, 12 billion at 6%, I think another 8 billion or so at about 7%. But even then, Kazakhstan issued Remni B 
uh, earlier in the year and they was at 3.3 percent so the premium is still high because a bond investor who wants to take a look at a ruble a russian ruble bond will say i'm not doing that your currency is depreciating and the return on the investment i'm going to ask for is going to be higher it explained everything what does china get in return china look at this here the circle of money closed loop russian oil exports to China. China, of course, is funding, is helping Russia to fund this war by buying its oil. Most of the banks that are essentially getting these payments are Russian banks, which hold Remini B, and they're most of the buyers of these bonds that Russia has issued. It is one of the most detailed explanations of how this works. If you are a teacher, if you're a journalist, if you're coming on a rise news to get grilled by the morning show, you can actually send something to get talking points together. Whoever the data visualization is incredibly detailed. Now, we fed this same article to chat GPT and this is what we got it's not as sexy right but it still essentially gives you the talking points but it is just four five talking points and that's it also there was no um, uh, grammatical errors here but let's bring this home with another story that was from two um, newspapers the punch and the Sun the Federal Executive Council yesterday in Nigeria approved the 2026 to 2028 medium term expenditure framework, the MTEF. For those of you who have watched this show several times, this is the base for our appropriation bill. It has to go through the legislature and then um, if the president signs it, then we get our budget. We're at the end of our budget cycle, so we're looking towards um, the next year. So here is what this is, uh, 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 Budget Minister uh, uh, Bugudu. Let's go back, now let's quickly go back, one second. Let's go back to the punch, the punch story. The punch says, FG unveils 54.4 trillion budget as debt service gulps 15.91 trillion naira. Now, to be clear, we do not have the numbers from the budget office. The budget office is going to pass this on to the legislature on Monday. They will hopefully upload the exact figures um, for the budget and then we can discuss what those numbers are. But we fed this, uh, this story from The Punch, which is a very long story. The Punch talked to economists who were talking about the issues they have with the budget. They were talking about a whole number of things and also the figures. The Sun also wrote uh, a story on this very same budget. Apparently, I think the two of the reporters from The Punch and and the Sun attended the Federal Executive Council meeting, took notes and wrote their stories. So the Sun here says, FCC endorses 2026-2028 medium term fiscal plan, forecast 34.3 trillion. We fed both to Gemini 3.0 and to JATGPT in order to get a summary of both. And my goodness. <sighs> so this, this, this is the detail that we got from Gemini. So for the first time, we're getting a dual oil benchmarks. Apparently, there is a benchmark for the government at 1.8 trillion, uh, excuse me, 1.8 million barrels per day, and a benchmark for the industry of 2.2 million barrels. You can see that explained in, de in perfect detail by Gemini 3.0. So the top left, you have the concerns of economists that the punch wrote about, it summarized it. At the bottom left, there is a discrepancy between uh, the punch and the sun on debt servicing costs. The punch is saying it's 15.9 trillion. The sun is saying it's 10.9. Maybe the sun is only including interest, interest payments. But the point is this, Gemini perfectly shows the discrepancy with two arrows, one going left, one going right, with a question mark as to exactly who is correct with, in terms of the budget. Now, switching to chat GPT, can anyone see the error here? If I, I know we have some sharp people on YouTube. Medium has two eyes. Thank you. It made an error. It actually made an error. Chat GPT. So look, to summarize, um, Sam Altman, after all the hype of Gemini, after all the stock price went up, there's, this headline was everywhere. He called a meeting of staff and said, hey, listen, there is fire on the mountain. We are facing a whole lot of competition from this company. The fact that there are almost no errors it, the, the data visualization is incredibly detailed. What it's going to do for learning, productivity, is 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 frankly amazing. That's 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 all I got for you today, man. Uh, a supporter, an advocate, <laughs> a promoter still... in uh, Arise News, but you know these AI models. Yeah, they they spend six months. Yeah. There will be another, another one. one. But the implications for productivity, we know that. Great but also, I have a productivity uh, uh, implications for human capacity. Yes. That is another area.